to the actual reforming of, of biomass. So please, if you guys have questions while I'm going, feel free to interrupt me. Um, it's a less formal setting, and, and I'm glad we had such a great turnout. There's a lot of people here, it's great. Um, okay, so just a quick overview. First, I'm gonna start, to start talking about the importance of biomass, basically um, localized renewable fuels and, and biomass reforming in general. Then I'll, I'll move to heterogeneous catalysis and, and talk about the advantages of metal catalysts and, and, like I said, some of the physics behind it, and then finish up with an example from, from my research. So, uh, to start, so, if you don't know what biomass is, um, long story short, there's many sources of biomass. Um, you know, plant, or animal matter, uh, plant, plant matter, plant waste, um, farm waste, um, you know, it comes in many forms, but, but when, you, when you really look at the molecular makeup of, these, of what biomass is, what it comes down to is that it's, it's carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Usually carbon backbones um, that are oxygenated and, and saturated with hydrogen to some extent. And we'll look at some of the structures of, of biomass in a couple slides. Um, so so the, the goal of this project is basically to convert these resources, the biomass, into synthesis gas, which is carbon monoxide, hydrogen gas, and carbon dioxide. So I'm going to blow up this little chart on the, the right here. And why do we want to, why do we want synthesis gas or, or syngas for short? Um, basically, from syngas you can make all kinds of useful things. Um, you know, it contains hydrogen, so if you can purify the hydrogen, you can use it for electricity in, in a fuel cell type application. Um, through Fischer Tropsch synthesis, you can get to um, gasoline and, and oil type um, type type molecules, which obviously could be used with the current. Um, infrastructure we have, we have gas stations, we have cars that run on, on gasoline. Um, you can make ethanol, similarly methanol, I mean these are all very useful chemicals that you can make from synthesis gas. So so really the idea here is we, we take biomass which isn't really useful as is, convert it to synthesis gas, and then once we have the synthesis gas we can make whatever we want from it and, and use it. Um, and, and you know, and, and this way, I'll get into this in the next slide. We can, you know, we can we can start to maybe expand um, our, our use of renewable fuels. We consider biomass a renewable fuel because we can keep growing it and, and keep making it. Um, so, so this is a pie chart of the energy consumption of the United States in 2007, and as you can see, uh, a huge fraction of this is um, coal, natural gas, and petroleum, which. Um, you know, a lot of the natural gas and petroleum resources we get from other countries. Um, coal, we get domestically. Nuclear power, renewable power, renewable fuels, we, we get domestically. Um, so, so the next slide, the next picture I'm going to throw up here is here are oil prices by date, starting back in 1987 and going to 2008. Um, so, so, so pay attention to the red line here. This that's in uh, 2008 dollars. Um, so, so basically what you can see is there's fluctuations, generally increasing, um, decreasing as of late, but I think the thing to, to pay attention to here is that um, these prices are volatile. Uh, you, you know, you look at the, the price here, 1998, under $20 a barrel, and then just a couple years later, you know, doubled in price. So if we're relying on, on this type of uh, energy source for most of our energy, um, you know, there's a lot of risk there, especially if the price is um, jumping around like it is. So, so basically some of the advantages of diversifying our energy portfolio, you hear about people diversifying their portfolio, um, you know, uh, financially all the time, basically you're reducing your risk. Um, so if we can start to have more domestic sources of energy, less foreign sources of energy. Um, you know, we'll have economic benefits, and there's there's also environmental benefits that go along with that as well. Um, so, looking at biomass specifically, the kind of diagram we can draw is, you know, we can start with our local biomass source. You know, let's say you live on a farm, or you have a, you're in a city with municipal waste. That that's a form of biomass as well. Um, 
use this distributed catalytic reforming process, which I'll get into the, the what, what exactly this is um, in, in just a bit, convert it to synthesis gas. Remember, I talked about synthesis gas just in the previous slide. And then once we, get, once we have this at the local level, um, like I said before, really whatever you want to make, liquid fuels, um, purified for hydrogen, for electricity, you can make ammonia. Now, ammonia is an, an interesting chemical in itself. Um, it's actually the most highly produced chemical in the world because um, you can make fertilizers with ammonia um, and that can, you know, put that back into your biomass to make it grow faster. You can use ammonia for a lot of other things as well. So, so basically to summarize these first few slides, local sources of energy converting to synthesis gas allow for higher energy security and, um, and, and general economic and environmental benefits. Okay, so specifically, let's look at some molecular formulas here. Um, here are some very standard biomass type surrogate fuels. Um, so we can start with, so basically the, the way you can think about these is how many carbons are in them. So this, this first guy here is methanol, one carbon, and you know, you can start to increase complexity with these oxygenated hydrocarbons going from methanol, ethylene glycol, glycerol, sorbitol, and then finally, you know, these branch chain ring structures, um, cellulose type type uh, molecules. Yes. For you guys that never had any working in chemistry, which is pretty much everybody in the room. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the top one it has one carbon. Down below, it gets to be a real pain to write C over and over and over. So wherever you see two lines come together into an intersection, that intersection is a carbon. Right? So the one underneath it has an OH on one end and OH on the other and two carbons. Yep. And, and right? the intersection is a carbon. And, and I'll, I'll um, expand on that. These, where this carbon is, it's it's implied without writing the C that it's it's fully um, hydrogenated. So so each each one of these little corners here is a CH2. So this this ethylene glycol is, is going to be C2H6O2. Um, so, so looking at the re reforming processes specifically, there's several different ways to turn these guys into synthesis gas. Um, the first and the, the most simple is just heating it up and cracking it down to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So you know you can imagine starting. So this N is the number of carbons. So easy, you know just look at the the N equals one case. So there's there's one carbon here. Um, so N is one, so you have CH2OH2, or, or CH4O, which is, which is this guy. Um, break, you know, if you extract these hydrogens, you see you have a CO and you have two H2s left. So, so that's thermal decomposition. Now, the other reforming processes involve um, putting a co-feed into, the, into the, the reactant stream. For example, steam reforming, if you add steam with the biomass fuel, you get slightly different um, product stoichiometries. Um, you know, you don't have to pay too close attention to this, um, to, to the product for now. Um, but, but, you know, these are, these are some, some general terms you might hear. Steam reforming, combustion, or, or oxidation, you might have heard that before. Basically what that is, is you take the fuel, co-feed with oxygen. Um, and then you get your combustion products, water and carbon carbon dioxide. That's, so, so this is essentially the reaction that's going on in, in your car. Um, you know, you don't have a biomass molecule, you have no oxygen there, you just have a hydrocarbon, your gasoline, add oxygen, and you get carbon dioxide and water. Um, and, and, you know, this produces a lot of energy. Um, and then partial oxidation is, is basically fuel-rich oxidation, so you have less Oxygen, and then finally, autothermal steam reforming is when you 